Hello and welcome. Photography Live Show, another great episode. You're going to enjoy this one because we are going to show you how to take nice product photos at home. And we've got a number of different creators on today. So I've managed to actually go and have a trial of the YouTube and find some great tips from creators and I asked them if I could share them so throughout this session I'm going to actually do a live shoot give you examples and while I'm setting up and breaking down different shoots I'm going to actually bring you something from creators and some tips so you know get a lot from this session today photography live show we're in double digits now we are on episode number 11 so i thought we need to get serious and start making some interesting stuff not that what we haven't made so far hasn't been interesting i've got a link in the playlist to all the replays of the old shows so make sure to go and check those out you'll find some amazing tips and tricks if you're interested in photography we've done some sessions specifically for cameras so in the past couple we looked at the canon 550d and we also looked at the canon 5d mark ii camera and we kind of looked at different creators and how they're using those cameras and um, what i'll do is in the description of this session there is a chapter breakdown of the show so if you're watching this in replay you can actually go to the section you're interested in we're going to do a live product shoot along in different scenarios a basic shoot similar to like an ebay listing type shoot so if you're planning to take photos at home and you want to make some photos for etsy or your own shop or ebay and you want to get some tips this will be the video for you so i'm going to give you some examples of little diy rigs you can make to help you get consistent nice product photos we'll look at light setting up how to get different lights and angles of lights and the types of lights you can use we'll do some off-camera flash i'll show you some triggers and how i use those the positioning of products and just a bit of creative shooting at the end so that'll be basically the show and why it's product related this time is we've had a few product images that i've done in the past so i'm hoping that i can show you a few different examples and also the creators we've got on today that will speak and um, give us tips you'll find that helpful but what we'll do is i'll start by showing you an example of a, a cheap diy light box that you can make i filmed this early in the week and i saved it to show you it hello and welcome to this video how to make a product photography light box at home from any old box or cardboard i'm using this amazon old box which is quite a handy thing i basically taped up the sides just to make it a bit longer to allow me to take photos now this box will range in size depending on the types of things you're photographing if you've got quite a few things you're planning to photograph at home just get the right size box you want You'll watch me here currently making it. I just speeded this up and I'm doing a voiceover to save you watching the whole long process. But this is basically a thin card and I'm taping up the sides to make it a nice long cardboard. I have A4 sheets of paper which I'm going to be using for the diffusion. So this is something everybody should be able to make at home. So I'm basically just uh, measuring up which side would be best, making a few pencil marks and then making sure to cut within those pencil marks so there's the paper just doesn't fall through if that makes sense and um, so this is an old amazon box like i've said make sure you're careful with these sharp box cutters because they can cut a lot of skin <laughs> but yes yeah, so i'm basically cutting out a little box on each side and um, in my example i only put one light here but i'm going to be doing a live photography shoot along but i'll show you how to position lights to get the best from this so here you can see that's the top and um, we will do the same for both sides i'll show you one but it's basically the same thing over and over again so i'll show you this side and you repeat that on the other side as necessary cut out the little square and basically tape your paper onto it this is a temporary solution if you've got like 10 or 20 items you need to take a photo of for ebay or your own jewelry or anything like that it's a great option you'll have enough space in there for putting down like a bottom base some type of material maybe a luxury velvet type material i'm just going to show you an example with the white standard paper so here's the inside now i've done the outsides
make sure my mic's on. So that was a little segment of me making the light box studio. And that was set up just to help take a few shots. So what I will do is thank you for everybody in chat that's popping in. I'm keeping an eye on chat. So it's great to have you in the show. And I'm just kind of going through a few segments that we'll cover today. And this is a light studio that I just showed you that I made. Separate video on the channel. You can check out the whole thing. But I'll show you that now. And that's the actual uh, light studio little box thing I made. It's got a little LED panel light at the top. And the plan is going to be, I'm going to show you how to take photos and make them look consistent. So this is like your DIY at home kind of studio setup. So if you're just taking photos now and again with your mobile phone, you want to list stuff on eBay, this is going to be a good option for you. And if I take you to my desktop shot, I should be able to take photos. Let me just make sure. I should be able to take photos and you should see the photos pop up on screen. This is all live. So there's a lot of moving parts. If anything goes wrong, I'll go to a default screen, but we should be good. I've planned it and I've tested it. So we should be fine. So if I go to my desktop here, so you should see this shot now. And hello to everybody in chat. Great to have you. If I turn on my camera, which is this camera here, I'm going to actually take a photograph and show you how the photo looks with the settings. So if I open up my camera, there we go. So that's opening. Okay, so this will be a live shoot based on, let's just make sure. Okay. You're just thinking about it. Oh, let's just make sure we are good. Okay, interesting. So because of that, we'll need to just make sure the photos can be seen. Okay, so here we have, that's that camera view there, but we don't need that. So if I close Canon desktop, okay. Okay, that's a bit of a difficulty there, but what I will show you is the examples of the photos that I've already taken, which will give you an idea of that. So, if I bring it back up to... Okay, so on this screen, I'll show you the examples of the photos that I've already taken. And here are some examples of photos that I've taken with this setup. So that didn't work as planned, which is very bad. Yes, exactly what's going on in chat. So if I show you that battery there, that is a battery taken in this softbox here. And that's the photo that you can expect to get. That was also taken in this softbox. I'm calling it a softbox, but it's more of a light studio. And that is a, a keyboard shot. So if you're listing stuff on eBay or Etsy, that is the type of shot you can take with it. So that's interesting to see. What I will do is I'll go to a quick shot now and show you some from our creators because I think it'll give me time to sort out this because at the moment I was planning to do a live shoot and show you the pictures, but that wasn't working quite as planned. So if I take you over to Sophia where we talked about uh, product photography, she had a video on her channel and we're basically sharing that now. Thanks for joining us today, Sophia. It's great to have you on the show. I'm going to jump straight in and ask you about product photography and portfolios. Um, what's the best way to get started? I personally think that creating a portfolio for product photography is probably the easiest portfolio that you can create. Unlike a fashion photography portfolio or editorial or something like that, it doesn't require anyone else. You don't need to rely on a model or have any connections. Building a portfolio is as easy as getting household items and shooting them. What are you using as product photos in a portfolio? This morning I went out and took just a handful of different household items from watches, perfume, skincare stuff, and I just shot a few different looks to kind of show you guys how you can use things from home, things you already have to create product photography. So I did shoot all of my product stuff in this video on my camera, on my Canon 60 Mark II, but you can use a phone. There's not really any reason that you can't do product photography 
if you have something that takes a photo. Yeah, so an excellent point about using anything that takes a photo. We've got another creator coming up in the show that actually uses his mobile phone for product photography. So it'd be great to see that and how he gets amazing shots really. What do you think about simple studio setups to get product photos? Creating a DIY studio really couldn't be easier. You'll see that for a lot of these shots, I just used a very simple white bit of paper or two white bits of paper. You can use white paper that creates like an L shape. Um, you'll have a seam here and you can take that out in editing or you can kind of bend the paper so that it creates like a curve. And then that's a really good way of creating a seamless backdrop. So later on in the video, we're going to take using this technique and this raw image, and we're going to convert it into something that you could use, such as this image. I noticed you like a lot of natural lighting product photos as well. So tell me a bit more about that and some examples. So I waited for some direct light. It's a bit of a cloudy day, so the light kept coming and going, but I waited for some direct light and then I took myself underneath a tree where the light was shining through the trees and creating like this nice shadows on the on the concrete. I find concrete for product shots really nice to use. It's simple and it kind of has that rustic aesthetic that I like to go for. The great thing about utilizing natural and direct light in product photography is you can really play with the items. So for example, some of the items that I had were the glass was um, it was orange, so it was creating an orange reflection onto the concrete. Any kind of glass item that you're using will create a nice reflection. Any final tips you'd like to share with us? A top tip is to avoid wearing bright colours yourself because you will act as a reflector. So if I'm wearing white, I will act as a reflector. If I'm wearing orange, like a bright orange, for example, I might reflect that orange into the image, creating a colour cast. So that's something you want to avoid. I also do. That was a quick pre-recorded session that we did. I'll link in the cards to her channel so you can actually check out her YouTube channel and her Instagram. She's got some great content being pushed out. And let me quickly show you her Instagram because you'll see some more. Let's just make sure that's okay. Yes, that's fine. So that is her Instagram there and you can check that out. She's a London Manchester based fashion and wedding photographer. So, okay, with this live session, we're having a bit of difficulties which is always interesting. Thanks for joining us today, uh, Sophia. Let's just have a look at that so we can see. Let's just make sure we are all good. And okay. So the plan was to do a live shoot along. However, there are some technical difficulties. What I have done is pre-recorded the live sessions anyway. So in the playlist in this video, you'll see some sessions that we did from early in the week showing light setup and how to actually do a live product shoot. I'm hoping I'll sort out the bugs as we go through the session. But yes, it worked in the earlier session, which I tested on another channel, but as is with these things, it's never perfect when you need it to be. So I think I'll have a quick look at another creator and see if I can sort out these little issues. So Optical Wonder does some great content and he's got some stuff on his channel about making great product photos with mobile phones. So you don't have to have a really great DSLR camera even to take these types of uh, photos. You can take it with mobile phones. So if I quickly show you that segment now. Now today I'm going to be doing a little bit of a review but also some product photography with a mobile phone. Now I currently use the iPhone XS Max but these tips will kind of you kind of work on uh, pretty much. Now today I'm going to be doing a little bit of a review but also some product photography with a mobile phone. Now I currently use the iPhone XS Max but these tips will kind of you kind of work on uh, pretty much all phones because I'm going to use the basics. I'm only going to be using one app and that is going to be Lightroom on my phone to be able to edit the photos afterwards. But most of all, I'm going to be using just the camera phone, just this, the camera that's on the phone, nothing else. No other apps. There are other apps available, but I like to do it this way because that way you can see that it is doable. Just stealing my own light. About here, I'm going to go onto the phone. Now you can shoot it like this. But I would suggest shooting it that way because then you can get closer to the subject and the camera is obviously on the bottom. So you're going to get a bit closer and probably a better photo overall. I'm just going to use that there. I'm going to get one just on its own as well. Okay, so I've brought the LED right onto the back of right onto the back of the ring, which looks really, really, really cool. 
Yeah. Now, editing on your mobile can be pretty difficult sometimes, and sometimes you're like, well, I only have a phone, so where can I start? Now, using Lightroom on your phone is a really, really simple way to get started. And honestly, I will put my hand on my heart and say that if you're going to use Lightroom mobile, you will 100% know it because it is insane you can create presets you can create profiles you can create amazing imagery in there so you can just use it like you would a laptop it is a little bit more difficult but you can still yield really good results Today I'm going to be doing a little bit of a review but also some Okay, so right now that's the F8. Okay, and that comes through nicer. So that gives you an idea of flashes and using them on additional sides. But I think there's some issues here now with the mic isn't there. What a, okay, so what we'll do now is we'll have a quick look at uh, Wes and Wes will give us some of his tips about photography. A lot smoother when it's done pre 
recorded than live because you have all these bugs that come out. So if I go over to Wes. It's Wes, welcome to another video. Today I'm gonna take you inside a practice product photography shoot. Um, this is with some EDC gear I picked up, the Kershaw filter and the Timex uh, 40 millimeter standard leather watch. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm gonna show you the six principles that I use to get great product photos. Um, the audience is Instagram, but it could also be knife lovers. I use some hashtags for the EDC community. And so um, I wanted something that they would stop while they're scrolling on Instagram. Something that would be surprising, a lot of contrast, very sharp. Uh, and um, then the mood, I was trying to evoke a sense of awe and wonder. And you can see that I, I actually chose to do this by playing on a sense of balance or implied motion or tension by positioning the knife straight down into the stainless steel table. And then of course I have my finger on the top of it and I removed that in Photoshop. I was pretty but, happy with these. These six tips can really help you nail a um, product photo. So you have subject, illumination and lines, background, audience and mood. If you keep all those in mind, you'll get a nice well balanced shot that, that really makes an impact with their audience. And that's what you're looking for. Yeah, thank you, Wes. That was excellent to see. That's some really good tips. And I'll show you Wes's Instagram very quickly. So that is Wes. And he's got some great stuff on his channel as well. So it's nice to see he's doing some great creative content and a lot of Instagram content as well. So that gives us an idea of what is capable with product photography. So there's a lot of little issues now, which is amazing. Uh, we're on episode 11 of the photography live show and we thought we'll up our game here with a, a live shoot along which seems to be giving us difficulties so what i will do is in the replay of this show i'll put little segments to those shoot alongs that we do there was about it was about 45 minutes where we took photos and we shared them with uh, reddit users and that was to see what types of photos they could edit and what they could do with them so if i show you let me just go back to okay now we should be able to there we go so that is a quick look if you're in chat if you're over from reddit say hello it's great to have you on the show always uh, we gave you some product images which i took from the last session i gave you some raw photos you worked your magic with them so let's have a quick look there that's number one that was an image that was supplied raw so you could edit it for us that was a second image that was taken on a live shoot which did work on another test channel which didn't work today got it okay so that is another image there was three images supplied the plan was to edit them and see what you could do with them so edit my raw is a reddit group let me bring up there so we supplied the images we had different creators pop in and edit it for us which is great to see if you're in from Reddit, make sure to say hi. It's always great to see you guys on the show. So let's have a look here. What we'll do is we'll go through them in order of receipt. And that is, I've got number one here. Let's just open that up. Okay. There we go. That's not a bad idea, actually. What I'll do is I'll show all those images together and then we'll go to the other images. So let's have a look. Oh wow. Look at that. Have I still got my Yeah, at least that works today. <laughs> okay, that's a great award because he's given it some fake uh, smoke and I like the detail there. Okay, and let's have a look at another one. Okay, that's another one from Madge. Nice detail. He's given it like a vignette. Oh, okay. Raj, nice job. Deep colors. The products look nice. Ah, okay. That's a Uber Vincent. He did like one of just the individual item as well as he did a second one where we cut out. Yes, nice. Just to show detail. Product shots are always great. And Richie Hufflepuff. Oh, yep. That's back to the start. Okay. So that was the first set of images. I'll show you the standard. That was the standard that was yes okay so a number of different entries there um i like how they've some of them have like a bit of a reflection here but then with the edits they've distinguished those which is great okay 
So that was the product one. Let me have a quick look at the comments on this. First the vapes. I didn't touch lighting too much, just barely dropped the shadows to make the background disappear a bit more. Regarding colour, I just changed the hue of blue closer to cyan, a bit of lowered the saturation, finally added some vignette to make the background disappear a bit more and pumped the attention to the vape products. Nice job. Okay. I, I, that one's a really good one, that legendary one. It's kind of giving it that whole new atmosphere because it's added a bit of smoke in and that looks really good. I like the fact that it's blue tinge on this side and a slightly amber tinge on that side. Okay. Hello BS, great to have you in chat. Nice to see you popping in, always a pleasure. And let's have a look. Okay, there, that's a better look, isn't it? Because you've got the screen on its own. Okay, that was the first lot of entries. Let me just make sure we're good because we've had loads of bugs today which haven't helped us with our live shoot along. Been a bit of a meh, but we'll sort it out for next time. Okay, so that looks good. Okay, so that was the number one entry. Let me have a look at some more of these. So number two would have been the dessert picture. So Alpha Juan, always a great edit. Let me just make sure I can see that properly. Okay, that's his edit. Let me bring up the original, original edit. Okay, I can probably close this camera because that camera didn't work for us, did it? Okay, and, ooh, oh, that's like a nice clean feel to that. It's a bit bright. Oh, wow, legendary made it red it's given the strawberries a bit of a deeper feel the chocolate looks really nice on the cake it makes you want to have a chocolate okay ah majipu okay that looks really good actually i like the edit on that because the color and the detail looks really nice especially with that chocolate there can i zoom into that looks like wow as if it's there nice job nice job Uber Vincent, a nice chocolatey flavor to the whole thing. Some nice detail there as well. That's quite a nice job actually, because it's blurred out some of the bits. But yeah, we'll do a proper in-depth dive when I get the uh, section up. Let's have a look. Okay. Now, that's a nice job there as well actually. Alpha one. Okay, so we're back to the start there. That was number two. Let me have a look at some of them comments because then, okay. So last week, I think I post too late. No, it's all right. You can, I normally do a last minute before the show. I try and save the images and get them. Uh, let's have a look. So, okay. So one split into two images. That was the e-cigarettes. He did a separate image and the joint one, which was good. Uh, the watch to view grade. I haven't got to the watch yet. Uh, the cake. Okay, yes. Yeah, the watch we're saving for last because I did really well on that watch. Because that watch shoot was the live session on the Virtual Zolf channel, which was like a testing one, which worked well. Um, okay. Let's have a look at that. Uh, Alpha Juan, yes. Only did the dessert photo. All I did was adjusting the tone curve and some HSL work. Yes, dessert Alpha Juan. I mean, big up his one. There we go. So yeah, some, that's some nice edit there because I can actually see a lot of the detail from the... Because with these types of sh shots, you want them printed and put on uh, brochures and things. So it's nice that we've got a mixture of different edits there because I, I like that one. Because that would be like, you can if you had a, a dark paper, that would work really well on that. And that one is a, a lighter edit of it. Okay. Yeah, I think what we'll do is we'll have a look at a few more of these and then I'll see if I can get that uh, product photo images that we took last time because I can show you those as well for the next live edit because those are a list of nice images you might actually find useful to edit. So let's have a look. Okay, you know what? I'll bring you on to some of these. Okay, so for the edit, I wanted to add a warm and cool side style of lighting that's the vape one so initially i made radial filters for all the products and individually enhanced their details and colors then i went 
about getting the exposure and shadows right in such a way that there is some background and foreground separation finally few hsl corrections made a balanced photo yes that was his uh, let me bring up the edit so you can see it that was his uh, vape one because raj does some really nice edits for us every time he kind of puts in the detail is like, you seeing the whole image there you might not be seeing the whole image he, okay there that might be better okay um yeah you can see that and the logos are nice and bright and there's enough detail in there the blues are blue the whites have a nice tinge which would be interesting on print okay that was a nice job okay raj did a nice one there actually uh coral's one coral are you in chat let me know if you're in chat we're having a bit of a, a nice edit this time and it's amazing with the the loading of cameras and the live shoot which was supposed to be amazing but it's not working out for us this time i don't think okay legendary here is i cleaned up the photo a bit added some smoke yes legendary your smoke one looks amazing let me just bring that back up that is like a real nice job let's get in frame like that okay um some artificial rim lights to the vaping pens yes they help them pop out good job filled the smoke with some blue and red color to the opposite side of the blue and red pen yes found the company logo online and then did some level adjustments yes i should have put the logo in there shouldn't i probably the photos on their website are the stuff i took for them so yeah and um, watch okay here i clean i haven't got to the watch yet dessert i changed the background because i didn't think it matched the photo did some adjustments yes i liked his dessert shot as well because let's have a look at it with uh let me just bring that up with these types of photos you kind of take them while they're making the food so they get it prepared and they do like a separate session where they get all of them ready and the light the counter was a blue top blue top and i didn't have any sheet with me because i was on location and it's like a unplanned shoot because yeah i was doing some other another shop and they popped in and said oh, can you do a couple of shots and it kind of this is one of the early photos from them we've had different ones from them but at this point i was using a 100 millimeter macro lens what you will find is if you use a macro lens it is a lot better because a macro lens lets you get a unique perspective on every shot because that was 100 millimeters so there's no room for move, uh, zooming you have to kind of move with your feet so every image looks similar in terms of the layout and you get a good idea of the size and that um okay so that was a nice job there and okay let's just bring a few more of these it might be a shorter session today than normal because the live shoot that was planned would should have lasted 30 minutes and obviously it's uh actually i could probably show you elements of it in another way somehow okay so let's have a look at the watch which is the main one okay so if i bring you up to the watch so this was taken on another shoot earlier in the week i took them mainly for the purpose of showing you what can be brought back from like an image if i show you the standard image that was a standard shot and that was taken with just a light it wasn't anything fancy like today where we were planning to do multiple light setups this one was simple but i'm a may it was raw so i gave you enough to be able to pull stuff back and you'll see with the guys edits let me bring up the edits okay so that one instantly you can see an uplift oh god okay so raw edit raw edit so you can see the dials in there nicely it's got a bit of like a, a glossing effect which is nice so we were playing about with the setup basically what we could have in the frame and what we can't have so we first put the watch then we put the ring then we put the headphones in the back and it was on a, a, a stainless steel laptop so it's like just playing about with what was available and that's coral nice job it'll be good to get a bit of detail about how you did that because there's elements there where uh, but i wear that watch now long story sold it and then bought another one later in the past year great watch rolex daytona um okay so ooh, legendary likes his logos you know what That's got like a dark feel to it, like an evening type meal where you put it down. And I like the Rolex logo and the slight glosses there and the blacks are black. Maybe a little bit of a, uh, a reflection there would have been nice as well. Just to give it a bit of pop. 
but that was black so i know it's difficult to or maybe in photoshop do like a bit of a brush and then blur in or something but now nah, nice job good legendary always surprises us and you did some nice edits i'm not sure i can use that logo but it's for just purposes of looking at it isn't it it's not going to be used in print anything so we should be fine uh do you let us know if you're in chat and is tony here i don't think tony's in at the moment uh but yes yeah, so i'm doing these sessions a bit earlier but i might plan this a bit differently next time so i can show you the live shoot along oh wow maji poo look at that difference between the two of those that is a lot nicer and a brighter image let me bring you the original that's the original i do like that and he's kind of made a bit of black there so it doesn't distract and you know what mad you're going to get an award for that as well at least the, at least the award works today doesn't it oh my god uh don't tell me about it i'm gonna get annihilated in the comments okay so there yes yes okay i like that you know a lot because that watch face wow the colors are genuine as well i'm not wearing the rolly today okay and the, I see on the watch as well, there's a bit more detail. The watch, the ring even. And you can see the back glass as well. Nice job, nice job. Maybe I should have put something else in the back because that's like distracting. But it's giving us the, the threes, so it's kind of getting your eye diverted. Because headphones don't really go with that. What would have been nice to have in there? Mm. Let me know if you're watching in replay. What would have been nice to have included there instead of the headphones? Um, okay, that was Maggie's one. Ooh, Uber Vincent. That's like an Emission Impossible style uh, theme colour there, like a slight tinge of greeny bluey. But I do like that as well. And the nice crop to make it letterbox. Let me check your okay, legendaries watch uh, here. I cleaned the watch a little bit from scratches on the surfaces, removed some dust, then I sharpened the photo because I thought it was a bit blurry on the watch. After that, I gave it this golden look which I thought it looks wicked and it seems to complement the premium feel. Also did some level adjustments, added Rolex logo. Yes, good job. That was the one we saw earlier, which was that one there. So yeah, I've gotten to his description. Let me just make sure I've got, I've got Madge up on here. Madge, okay, watch. My favorite of the three images, desaturated some colors. Okay, let me bring his photo up, Madge. I really like that. Um. Okay. Let me bring that back up. Uh, yes, uh, desaturated some colors, cleaned up the dust, etc., and just tweaked part of it until I got it to how I'd like it. Added a split tone to finish it off. That was a really good view on that. Okay. Let me have a look at the next. That, oh, that's really nice. I'll put them side by side in the end, and you can see them all. That was Uber Vincent. He's a regular as well. He does some great shots, uh, edits for us. Let me see if I've got his one up. Probably further up. Yeah, we read that earlier because he's, yeah. Uh, yeah, pen and the rest, the cake, yes. The watch to view grade polish. Oh, I don't know what that is. Is that like a old Sianne Karu and details this means that you will see details in retouching and the look more detail more perfect let me google that because I'm not familiar with that oh it's like a oh okay it's like a one of the defined technical color spectrums I think interesting okay uh, yes Uber Vincent one we've seen there witchy Hufflepuff I like that it's got like a warm feel and like that bit in the back. Was that was that there before? I'm trying to think what that was because I took it on this desk. It might have been the desk. Okay, yeah. So it's warmed it up. It's like a bit of a spotlight in the middle. So even if you take a picture with not great lights and you have retouches, it's amazing what they could do because this wasn't taken with great lights. It was just one top-down light. And I did like a couple of different angles on it. And it wasn't great shot to be honest. There was it's more of a test for this show, and the test did better than this show uh, for the live shoot along. Anyway, that was planned. I'm gonna have to retitle this video now, not call it a live shoot along. Um, okay. The oh, now I like Witchy Huffle. You know what Witchy Hufflepuff's gonna get? Yeah, because Witchy Hufflepuff did a nice one last week as well. Her edits, her or him nice edits on the 
colors and stuff. And I like that slight yellowy feel. Look how nice that looks. Can I flip it? Not that you need to flip it for any reason, but I just, you know, oh, that looks quite cool actually, like hovering stuck on the wall. Um, okay, yeah, nice job. What else have we got? Yep. Mm, okay, this is like a go between between the dark edit and the Mission Impossible edit. It's like a bit of detail and a bit of... What are you using on that yap? Let me see if his comment. Uh, yap. Now the watch for lighting exposure and contrast up a bit. Shadows down. For the colour I gave it a tad of green tint. Added some vignetting as well. Ah, that's probably what's making it pop. Okay, nice job. And... Okay, that's back to the start, I think. Okay. That was an interesting one. Let me see them all side by side because we have got some. Uh, okay, so if I show you that and then do it by large, maybe let's zoom it in a bit. Okay, there. So right now, the ones that stick out. Actually, Uber Vincent's one, for some reason, is catching my eye. That slight colour, like that Mission Impossible style colour, makes it look really nice. It's like a metallic-y, silvery feel to it. Okay, and also, Richie Hufflepuff's nice, because the middle of that, when you look at it as a thumbnail, even Magipu's is really good as well. Okay, so my... Oh, it's going to have to be between Richie Hufflepuff, Madge, and Uber Vincent that catch my eye. The others are really nice as well. But those ones are catching my eye. So those three are probably my... Madge's looks really nice though. It's just the fact that it looks nice and clean in the face. Okay. Let's have a look at the other ones because these were the number three edits. Let's look at number two. Okay, zoom in a bit. Okay, these are all product photos that have been edited and adjusted to get better. Okay, Legendary's one looks really nice there because of the difference of the darkness. He's right. It complements the cake better because the cake is dark. And also, Juan. Juan's one is nice. I do like Madges again. I don't know what it is. Is that feel about that blue's a bit darker? The two darker ones look actually witchy Hufflepuffs as well. Because it's got like a. Isn't the Hufflepuff colours blue? Is it blue and silver? That was actually. That's quite a nice job as well. Okay, so again, I've got three Legendary, Madge, and Witchy Hufflepuff. Like the ones that stick out for that colour complement. Complement. Compli, complement. Complements, yeah. The colour complements it. Okay, let's have a look at one last. The last one, which is the cigarettes, e cigarettes. Okay, straight away, I mean, we've gone a bit too far. Okay, Cigara. Legendary is one nice. And Raj's I like because they got a deep color to it and the white stands out. But again, Maggie's got that nice. It might just be my color preference, to be honest. Because Maggie's kind of, it's got that vignette feel and it draws your attention into it. Which is really nice. Okay, let me just make sure we are good. Okay, that looks fine. Yes, so that was a quick look at today's session of Edit My Raw Photos. Those are photos all taken with a camera and edited. So that lets you know you can take great photos. We had some great creators on today that shared some of the photography tips, did a bit of live, not live, but their shoot alongs, which are on their channel. Make sure to check out the playlist for videos to the full uh, thing that they've created. They're all on social media as well. And in the description, I'll link you to their channels so you can check them out. Um, today's session was planned to be a live shoot along. We had some difficulties, so I'll probably do a secondary shoot where we'll sort these things out. But again, in the description and in the playlist, you will see the sessions that were done of a live shoot along were planned for this shoot. So that was a quick look at today's session. Nice and short because we've had a few issues. So I'm hoping to see you again next week and we'll have a, another focus on 
lenses where we look at different types of lenses for photography, cheap as well as expensive lenses. And it's great for everybody in chat that came in today. So thanks for joining us and sharing your ideas and comments. And I'll see you on the next photography live show.